ends of the world. Sanctified believer. When you think about 50, what comes to your mind? Pomp and glee, jubilee or jubilation? Well, I think five, 10, 15 saved men who came together to take a stand. I see a room filled with God's love first and man then, like Genesis, but there was already light and life. Then a man says, come, let us live a life like Christ, win souls for Christ, fight for Christ, uphold for Christ, stand for Christ. Oh, I can think of the whiffs of the room. It must have centered determination, consecration and fear, but Isaiah 41 verse 10. For the faith, it's been eight years of holiness, earnestly contending for the faith. It's been 50. A young man 50 years ago started in that room with a Bible study and dreaming it to actualization, beaming it through the earth like Mark 16 15 to build a church. To build a life a deeper, sunk, drank, soaked in the Bible, believing Jesus as our own hope. In that room, 15 saved men prayed, studied, and tarried, promised our God that they would stay to the end of days for the faith once delivered unto the saint. And it all began. Commitment took an handshake with holiness in that four cornered room. And from Bible studies, to revival hours, to worship services, to building relationships, true fellowships, to retreats, to says, this memory we carry and share in our minds and art. From an high school, to colleges, to GCK, the gospel, to every creature, to impact where I and hundreds of thousands of youths have been transformed. From ground to peak, from grass to grace, from zero to hero, from 15 men to a million army, risen and rising, and from that four cornered room to this magnificent edifice. Oh, what love and joy that can't be explained from my orifice. A church your heart wants, no spots or wrinkles. That at the last row, 50. I think resilience. I see the fate of our fathers, holy and living still, and so youth and children, we are the church. We are the hope of this church, the future representation of this army, God's army. Men have spent sweat, time, and resources to keep on this faith, this church gleaming, and so the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Let us come together in this room, just like the 15 young men in 1973, to stay and tarry and uphold this banner of holiness and righteousness. It's possible. Deeper life is 50, and still standing, upholding the streets and displaying God's faithfulness in unity. Oh, I see an army stomping. I see us stomping this ground in the next 50 and 100 and 150 years to come till our Lord tarries. And if you still stand here and you don't stand in this army, God's army, and you haven't been saved, called out to stand out, reflect. Remember in the favorite verse of scriptures of our father and founder, our mentor and leader, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord our God. And as we celebrate 50, we are celebrating souls who have been made old. So how about you? How long will you linger? How long will you be a mediocre instead of a soldier in the army? This is a call, a time for sober reflection. But it's not too late to be what you haven't been so ponder. Come and join this movement, the stomping of God's army. It's 50, and I think joy, I think pomp and glee, I think jubilee and jubilation. And so let us rise on our feet as we praise the dependable God who is able to make today possible. 
clap offerings to the ruler of the earth. Because only our God has done this and all is worthy of all our praises. This is an evidence, a message that whatsoever genuinely starts with Christ is made sustainable. Deeper life is 50. And this is proof of the faithfulness of the creator of creations. Thank you. Man. On or off camera, best man I know, other than my daddy. No, and that's for mercy. I, then there'll be R, there'll be A, C, L, and E. And before we finish everything, a miracle will land on you right there. The fourth quarter of the year is now upon us. And now, at a time when many seek the right encounter, GCK offers you a divine encounter with the God of miracles. Christ has come today. He'll turn you around in Jesus' name. This is real. I said the miracles are real. Bringing wonders for all at GCK September edition. The God of miracles is on the call. Open now to experience a divine encounter. Live. From Zambia, Southern Africa. September 21 to 26, 2023. $1,600 hours GMT daily. The Alpha location is the National Hero Stadium, Lusaka, Zambia, Southern Africa. The theme is Divine Encounter with the God of Miracles. This is for everyone, everywhere. No boundaries, no holding back. As ministers, church workers, and professionals will be recalibrated to start exceeding limits in ministry three days september 22 25 and 26 at 0700 hours gmt daily live at malangoshi international conference center kkicc lusaka zambia 
and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Zambia, Zambia, Zambia. Get ready to experience Impact Academy like never before. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will be ministering especially to teenagers, young adults, campus students, and young professionals. It will be the awakening of the sleeping giants. Impact Reloaded live from Zambia. Saturday, September 23, 0700 hours GMT. And the glorious global Sunday worship service, September 24, also at 0700 hours GMT. The global choir will be ministering alongside our guest gospel music artist, Jonathan Lee, from the USA. Lusaka will host the power of God through Jesus Christ to yield multiple blessings to the globe via satellite and all our social media platforms. The anointed, appointed, and assigned man of God, the international gospel evangelist, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui, says, With God, all things are possible. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Heavenly Father, we thank and adore you for this evening. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you because, Lord, of your favor, your mercy is upon us. Thank you for how you've been with us. Thank you because we know you have brought us here to do us good. We pray and ask that your goodness we all see tonight in Jesus' name. As we sing, we pray that the hosts of heaven will join us in singing. And help us, Lord, to feel your touch tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have come unto the Lord. We have come unto the Lord. We have come to our Father. We have come to renew strength. We have come. We have come to our Father. We have come to renew strength. We have come unto the Lord. We have come, we have come to our Father, we have come to renew strength. We have come, we have come to our Father, we have come to renew strength. Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, we are here for you, Jesus. Jesus, we are here, Jesus. We are here, we are here for you, Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, Father. We are here, we are here for you. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know. My Savior died for me. My sins were washed away, hallelujah. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful, wonderful to know. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me wonderful to know my savior died for me all my sins were washed away hallelujah that jesus died for me wonderful wonderful to know I know my Redeemer liveth, I know my Redeemer liveth, I know my Redeemer liveth, he liveth forevermore, do you know? Yes, I know, 
I know, I know my Redeemer liveth, he liveth forevermore. Do you know your Redeemer lives? Do you know your Redeemer liveth? Do you know your Redeemer liveth? He liveth forevermore. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I know my Redeemer liveth, he liveth forevermore. Do you know why he is Jesus? Do you know why he's so great? After three days, he rose from death. I've never seen a man who rose from death like Jesus Christ. Do you know? Do you know why he is Jesus? Do you know why he's so great? After three days, he rose from death. I've never seen a man who rose from death like Jesus Christ. That is why he's Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. In heaven, on earth, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the My Lord can do all things, so oh, yes. He can do all things, amen. My Lord can do all things. My Lord can save you, oh yes, he can save you. My Lord can deliver, oh yes, he can deliver, amen. My Lord can heal the sick. My Lord can raise the dead. My Lord can do all things, oh yes, he can do all things, amen. That wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus. There is no other name, I know that wonderful name. Jesus, oh yes, that wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus, there is no other name I know, revive me, revive me, O oh Lord, revive me, revive me, O oh my Lord. Please revive me, Lord. Revive me, O oh Lord. Revive me. Revive me, O oh Lord. Revive me. Revive me, O oh my Lord. Revival. Pentecostal revival. Revival. Pentecostal revival. Revival, Pentecostal revival, 
We need your revival, Pentecostal revival, revival. Revival, Pentecostal revival, revival, Pentecostal revival. We need your revival, Pentecostal revival. I can see the finger of God rewriting my story. Rewriting my story. I can see the finger of God. Today, today, rewriting my story. I can see the finger of God. Tonight, tonight, rewriting my story. Jesus the same, the truth and the life. Whosoever cometh to him shall never die. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Whosoever cometh to him shall never die. Jesus, the way, is the truth and the life. Whosoever cometh to him shall never die. The life whosoever cometh to him shall never die. Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the same today and mighty to save. Today and forever. He is the same today and mighty to save my seed. Present yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same today and mighty to save. Yes, he is the same today and mighty to save. He is able, abundantly able. To deliver and to save, he is able, abundantly able, to deliver those who trust in him, trust in the Lord, abundantly able, to deliver and to save my God is able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him. The man of Calvary, he's done it before in your life, in my life, he will do it again. Jesus of Nazareth. He's done it before. He, man, he will do it again. Jesus of Galilee, he has done it before. In your life, in my life, he will do it again. Jesus of Calvary, he has done it before. He will do it again. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. And gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet said, this is the day of the latter days. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing, Jesus.
Jesus breaks the yoke. It's not by power. It's not by might. By my spirit, saith the Lord. It's not by power. It is not by might. Saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain shall be removed. By my spirit, saith the Lord. It's not by power. It's not by might. By my spirit, saith the Lord. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow strength for today, each time of the way, and all that I need for tomorrow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow, follow through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow him. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere he leads me. I will follow him. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere, yes, everywhere. I will follow him. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Amen. I have found Jesus. Amen. He is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. He is able to do all things. Amen. I have found Jesus Christ. Amen. My God is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. I have found Jesus. Amen. My God is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Expect a miracle when you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. There is power sitting on the throne. Expect a miracle when you pray. When you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. There is power sitting on the throne. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of God that he should repent. God is not a man that he should lie, 
My brother, son of God, that he should repent. Behold, I've received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it, for God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Behold, I've received commandment to bless and he has blessed and i cannot reverse it for god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent be with me tonight oh never let me by be with me tonight and never pass me by let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Oh, never let me by. Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by.
Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word, ever new, ever fresh. Thank you for your spirit that will take every part of the word and apply it to every heart and every person. We pray, Lord, tonight your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, with our heart, with our mind, with our brain, with our thinking, we'll follow through your word, and the word will be of tremendous benefit to everyone. Fulfill your promise in the word. And the example we see in the word, we we'll pray to lead us to have the same faith, and the same trust, and the same confidence. And as you have not changed, the power, the impact of the word will not change in our lives. Do good in every life tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody shout. Tonight we're looking at Mark chapter 5. It's a very familiar story. But it has not so familiar application. I'm reading to you from Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press of the crowd, in the multitude behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, if I may but touch, touch by faith, touch with confidence, touch with trust, Touch with expectation, his clothes I shall be whole. And straightway, instantly, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body, she felt in her body after that touch that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, in the crowd, in the multitude, and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thus says the multitude thronging thee, and says thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 
And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And the church said, that's the story we're looking at tonight. And it's about the torch of faith that the woman had on the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we touch him or he touches us, there is always a demonstration of his power. And as we gather together, all the instances that we have in the Bible, when people touched the Lord, and when he, the Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and the very Son of God from heaven, when he touches anyone, like he will touch you tonight. There's always a demonstration of the miracle power of the Lord. Number one, there will be recovery. Whenever you touch him or he touches you, if you have been down, if you have been despondent, if there's disease or plague in your life, sickness you've been battling with, as to touch him, and he touches you, there will be recovery. Number two, there will be restoration. You've gone far away from the Lord. And now you come to the Lord and you touch him by faith. Restoration will come in your life. Whatever you have lost, whatever you have missed, when your hand of faith touches him, there is restoration. The touch we're talking about tonight, which is the touch of faith. When he touches you and you receive that touch by faith, there'll be renewal. Give me a good amen. When the Lord touches us, a renewal takes place. Any part of our system, from the spirit to the soul and to the body, he renews us. If you're weak, he'll renew your strength. If you are down, he'll lift you up and there'll be renewal. You know, when Jesus touches us, there is regeneration. Regeneration means that your soul had been dead in sins and trespasses. And now the Lord touches you. And there is regeneration. He recreates your spirit. We can call it recreation. That the life of the spirit, the life of the soul that had been away before, a renewal, regeneration, welcome. Sometimes you are not sure of who you are, where you are. And then you come to the Lord and you touch him by faith. You will touch him tonight. Then a touch of reassurance comes. You are down there. You are wondering how it is you will live the life that is confident and courageous. And reassurance comes. When he touches us, the righteous one, the holy one, the mighty one, the powerful one, he touches us, and the person who has been unrighteous before becomes righteous. A touch of righteousness. There are times you are weary, you are tired, you are worn out, and then you say, if I can only touch him, and then you stretch forth your hand of faith, and you touch him, and there is refreshing that comes, and the weariness, and the dryness, everything vanishes away. Tonight, it will touch everyone. There will be recovery. There will be restoration. There will be renewal. There will be regeneration. There will be reassurance. There will be righteousness. 
there will be refreshing uh, as it touches us. As we look at the passage, the topic tonight is divine transformation through the touch of faith. You're not looking at him in the physical. And it's not in the physical or the crowd or the press or the multitude. But he says, where two or three are gathered together, he will be in the midst of them. If we're gathered in his name. And tonight, we're gathered in his name. We're studying his word. We want to see again his power, his authority. For Christ Jesus has the power to manifest spiritually, to manifest physically, and to manifest emotionally even in your life. So tonight, as we look at the story afresh, we look at it from the perspective of divine transformation through the touch of faith. On the one hand, there is the touch of faith, and then the result of that touch, which is divine transformation. Connection between us and God. And then transformation will take place in every one of our lives. It will happen tonight. Three things we're looking at as we look at this story. Number one, a decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Decisive. There's no doubt about it. And it's definite. There is no maybe or but about it. A decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Point number two. The descent disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. The woman would not have known that Christ will know it immediately. In fact, the disciples did not know. They said, you see many people thronging you pressing on you and you're saying who touched me but he affirmed and reaffirmed and revealed over and over somebody touched me that was the discernment of the spirit and the disclosure of the spirit the discerned disclosed touch by his truthful revelation point number three the desirable divine touch for a transforming renewal. That's the part that becomes applicable to you personally today. Desirable touch coming upon your life. A divine touch that is going to be manifest in your life. And it is for a transformational re a renewal. Desirable divine touch for a transforming renewal. We'll come to point number one. The decisive definite touch for total recovery. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grow worse. She had had the problem, the plague, the disease, the sickness, the issue of blood for 12 years, and she wasn't just lying unconcerned. She had seen and she had sought many physicians, doctors of the day, and she spent much money. In fact, the record says she had spent all that she had, and yet there was no improvement. Then she heard of Jesus. The day you hear of Jesus, your salvation is very near. Your healing is very near, and your deliverance is very near. And the victory that you have been seeking for 
and you have spent a lot of money and you didn't have, that victory is very near, is very near today. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Why? For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I shall be whole. And straightway, that means immediately, that means instantaneously, straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body, this is real. This is definite. This is a great miracle. This is a visible miracle. And she knew it. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. A decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Look at that passage again. There are three things you'll find there. Number one, the unclean and incurable woman. That plague made her unclean. That plague was incurable. She had tried everything she could try. There was no cure. The unclean and incurable woman. Number two there. The unchangeable and infallible word. The unchangeable and infallible word. The word of God. That heaven and earth may pass away, but his word, the word of power, the word of authority, the word of healing, the word of faith, that word will not pass away. The unchangeable and infallible word. Number three, the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. The undeniable and irrefutable wonder. Look at verses 25 and 26 as we look at the unclean and incurable woman. 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. She was unclean. How? That plague that disease, that issue of blood, according to the Levitical order, made her unclean. And that's why she sneaked behind. And tonight, any sin that makes any one of us unclean, and we have tried to be pure, tried to be healed, tried to be well, and we found that impossible. Tonight, all things are possible. I said all things are possible. You see it in your life. You feel it in your body. If it's your child, that child is well tonight. If it's your wife, you spent quite a lot, that wife is well tonight. It will make you whole. A change came for her. Healing came for her, and that healing is very near. But we need to seek his help. Look at Psalm 108, verse 12. Psalm 108, reading from verse 12. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. What tried? We've sought, we've gone to them, we've given them money, we've spent all that we have, but vain is the help of man. But Christ will help. Christ will heal. That thing that looks impossible, Christ will make it possible. In your life, the knot that appears, you cannot ravel, you cannot untie. You don't even understand why this, why that. Jesus 
is the answer. Acts chapter 4, I read from verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there deliverance in any other. Neither is there relief in any other. Neither is there cure in any other. Neither is there victory in any other. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But thank God the woman heard about Jesus. And thank God you are hearing about Jesus tonight. The same yesterday and today and forever. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5. Now we see the unchangeable word and the infallible word. Look at Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she heard the word about Jesus. She had testimony about Jesus. She heard the word that brought faith in her. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. What did she actually touch? Let's look at John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, reading from verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, that's talking about Christ, and the Word was with God, that's Christ, and the Word was God, that's Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. No wonder he healed everyone. All things were made by him. He's the creator. And if there's anything missing in your life, missing in your body, the Lord will create it tonight in Jesus' name. This Christ, the creator, will recreate you. This Christ, the healer, will heal you. This Christ, the Savior, will save you. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Look at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Christ is the word and is the unchanging, unchangeable word, immutable word and infallible word. And this woman heard of the word, heard of Christ. And she believed like you're believing tonight. And a change took place. A change is going to take place. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17, Romans 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That woman heard of Jesus, heard of the word, and faith came up in her. And as you hear about Christ, the word tonight, faith will rise up in your life. You will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. This word will turn your life around. This word will give you healing. This word will give you salvation. This word will give you power. This word will turn everything in your life around in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, 
I'm reading from verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God, without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, here is a secret, when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which worketh effectually also in you that believe. It will work effectually in you. As you receive the word, not as the word of a man, but the word of the Almighty God Himself. And as you receive Jesus, the word that is able to do today what He ever had done, that word, that Christ, that Savior, that healer, that deliverer will work in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. The unclean and the incurable woman heard the unchangeable and the infallible word, and then she experienced the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. She received she experienced the power of Christ that worked in her the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. And Christ is still the same. And his power is still the same. And his authority is still the same. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. His word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Let's come to Mark chapter 5 begin. We're reading from verse 27 all through to verse 29. Mark chapter 5. Reading from verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, somebody help me shout, straightway. Let me hear you say it with the preacher's voice. It will happen straightway tonight. It will happen immediately tonight. It will happen instantaneously tonight. And straight with the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That's how it happens always. And today is not an exception. Mark chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. Mark chapter 3 verse 10. For he had healed many, Christ, the healer, the deliverer, the savior. He had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him to touch him as many as had plagues. You know, some people think it's only this woman we're reading about in Mark chapter 5 that touched him. But many other people, when they had heard of him, they manifested the same faith and they touched him and their plagues were taken away. You will be among the number. Chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 54. Mark chapter 6, verse 54. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. And they ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages and cities and countries, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they, the sick, might touch 
if it were but the border of his garment. You see that? They had heard about other people touching him. And when they touched him, they were made whole. And so they brought the sick. Even those who were so sick, they couldn't walk by themselves. They were laid on beds, on couches. And they pleaded with him that these sick people might touch him. Look at the last line there, verse 56. And as many as touched him, tell me, were made whole. Going to happen to you tonight. Everyone that touches him by faith is going to deliver, is going to heal them. What a healing. What a wonder. And what a miracle. What a transformation. The touch produced a miracle. And as you touch the Lord tonight, a miracle will be produced in your life in Jesus' name. What kind of miracle? Number one, incomparable miracle. Incomparable miracle. Look at the woman. She'd gone everywhere and she wanted healing. But there was no help. No physician could help her. No healer could help her. No prayer house could help her. No tradition could help her. No ceremony of the Jewish religion could help her. But then she touched Jesus immediately. Healing came. Number one, incomparable miracle of healing. Number two, irresistible healing. As soon as she touched, connection brought miracle immediately. And tonight, as I mentioned the name of Jesus, nothing between you and Jesus, no wall of demarcation, there will be an irresistible miracle in Jesus' name. Number three, replaceable miracle. You couldn't replace that miracle with any other thing. That woman said, I've been suffering for such a long time, and I've not been able to get anything out of all the expenses I have made. And now I want something, and shall she turn Jesus Christ? A miracle happened incomparable to anything that can ever happen in her life. A miracle happened irresistible. She couldn't resist it. She had to come to Jesus to say and to confess, it's me that touched you. Your miracle tonight is irresistible, irreplaceable. I will not trade this for anything. I will not exchange this for anything. I have this one. I've been looking for this for 12 years, and now it has come. An irreplaceable miracle. An indisputable miracle. You couldn't argue with the woman. No psychologist could argue with the woman. No therapist could argue with the woman. No neighbor could argue with the woman. I got this. I felt it in my body. And I know it is real. Indisputable. Number five, an irreversible miracle. She got it. Satan could not take it away. Evil spirits could not take it away. Evil power could not take it away. And the comments of people, criticism of people could not take it away. She got a miracle that was irreversible. Tonight, your miracle is irreversible. But you know, the woman couldn't understand. Yes, she got it. Yes, she received the miracle. And she must have been wondering, how is it? Even though I said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. It happened exactly as I believe. But for me, it is incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. I couldn't see any electricity flowing from the garment to the woman. I couldn't see any trace of anything flowing, like water flowing, like a fluid flowing, incomprehensible. And yet, it happened. It's going to happen. And it was indispensable. Indispensable. What can I do without this? How far can I go without this? This is a miracle that is necessary, indispensable in every life. 
Well, that's how the miracle of Jesus is every time. A miracle of, of salvation, the same. Miracle of healing, the same. Miracle of deliverance, the same. Miracle of dominion, the same. Miracle of the supernatural, the same. And the miracle you get tonight, the same. Incomparable. Irresistible. Irreplaceable. Indisputable. Irreversible. Incomprehensible. Indispensable. I welcome you tonight to Miracle Center. I welcome you tonight to the place of the power of God. He will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Come to point number two now. The discerned, disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. When it happened, only Christ and the woman knew. Peter did not know. The person standing by did not know, but she knew because she felt it in her body. And now Christ revealed it. He discerned it. He disclosed it. Look at it. Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 30. Mark chapter 5, verse 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself without being told. That's why he is God. He's the son of God and he is God. He knows all things even without telling him. He knows the depth of sorrow and sadness that you may have. He knows everything about you. And as we are saying tonight, this is my night, he knows. As I was saying tonight, I will receive it tonight. He knows, he knows all things. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, pressing upon you. And says thou who taught me? And he looked round about to see her that had done the same. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And told him the truth. I'm happy tonight that I have a Savior who knows all things. I'm grateful to God tonight that I have a Redeemer who knows all things. Even before I know, even before you know, He knows everything. He's Christ. He knows it all. The good and the bad, He knows. The upright and the ugly, He knows. The true and the false, he knows, he knows all things. The hidden and the revealed, he knows. The secret and the open, he knows each all. Nothing can be kept hidden from the Lord. All your anxiety, all your care, all your thoughts, all your problem, even the unbelief and the faith and the expectation, and what you're thinking now, he knows everything. Nothing can be kept hidden from our Lord. All hidden actions, all hidden attitudes, all hidden atrocities, all hidden abominations are known to our God. He knows our actions of faith. He knows our acts of faithfulness. Everything will be revealed and rewarded. Actions of filthiness, he knows that too. Actions and acts of falsehood, he knows that too. And he will expose everything and punish everything. All unconfessed sins, he knows. All unrighteous secrets, he knows. All unclean habits, 
He knows all unlawful relationships. He knows all ungodly covenants. He knows all unfaithful transactions. He knows I will be exposed and punished by him. The very fact that Christ knows everything should make us to live a life that is free and full and powerful. Your life will be free. Your life will be powerful. And you know, whenever you are praying, you should remember that what you are trying to tell the Lord in prayer, he knows about that already. He knows the origin of the problem. He knows the source of the problem. He knows how the problem came. And he knows how the problem will be taken away. And tonight, you'll discover while you are praying, while he answers you, he knows everything. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, he discerns, he knows, of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. All the multitudes were there, a great crowd pressing upon him. And yet he knew when the woman touched the garment, and knew the woman that touched the garment, I knew the purpose, the reason why. I knew what had happened. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Tonight, he knows everything in your life. He knows your desires. He knows if and when you are sincere, and there's no point hiding anything. Make it open, reveal your heart, reveal your life to him. If there is sin in your life, you cannot hide. He knows, and he's the one to forgive. He'll forgive as you call upon him in Jesus' name. If the sickness is the one to heal, and you cannot just say, I have a problem. Tell him the name of the problem. And if you know how it came, tell him how that thing came. He knows it already. And when your revelation, your confession, matches his revelation, deliverance will come in your life. We'll come to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I read from verse 2. Revelation chapter 2. And we're reading the first part of verse 2. Look at that. Chapter 2, it says, I know thy works. Your words, he knows. Your works, he knows. Your thoughts, he knows. Your action, he knows. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the